and welcome back to Sustainable Picture. If it is your first time here, my name is Leticia and I'm glad to meet you. And, in you, and if you've been here before, I'm happy to see you again. In today's video, we will talk about the locomotory system because it's one of the effectors in the interaction function, which is the unit we are learning about right now. So, if you're interested in this, interested in this video, please subscribe hit the notification bell and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. The locomotory system is a set of two other systems, which are the skeletal system and the muscular system. Uh, any of them alone can work fully. They need each other to, uh, to be able to perform their function. I mean, the skeleton will support our body, but the skeleton alone can't move without the muscles. And the muscles won't support, they, they need, they need um, um, hard uh, support to maintain their shape, but they will help bones to move. That's why we consider them as a unique um, system which we, which we call the locomotor or locomotory system and they are both inside okay uh, so uh, which are the general functions of the locomotory system of course I already said this support for our body to be to be standing up and to move <laughs> so they will also be a source of calcium when it is necessary in the blood. They will protect us as well in the sense, for instance, the, the brain, the cephalon, you already know what is this, is inside the cranium. So it's um, a, like a helmet to protect the, the cephalon, which is really important for us in the interaction function, of course. And uh, the skeleton will be the um, point where muscles will fixate, will set. And uh, the, the some types of some types, only some types of blood uh, bones are related with blood um, cell production, specifically red blood cells. Okay. So it's really interesting all the functions that the locomotory system have apart from the function of the interaction function, the function of moving, which will be the one that we will focus on this unit. Let's talk a little bit about the bones. We won't learn the names of the bones of the body in this unit. It's not our objective. Our objective is to talk about the, uh, the interaction function. But the bones are hard structure, they are rigid, they are mainly made of calcium and um, the, um, the external uh, part of the bone is really compact, okay, really hard and the internal part is more spongy, like a sponge and this is due to the way bones are created when we are children and we can classify them in long bones like the femur Okay, short bones like those in the fingers, or flat bones like those in our in our back, in our shoulders, right? And it is really interesting in the long bones. Uh, so, sometimes also in the in the flat bones, okay. But in the long bones, we can differentiate two parts: the ends, the edges of the of the bone, the long bones are going to be called epiphysis. And the central part of the bone is called diaphysis and it has this yellow medulla that uh, sometimes we eat. Okay, when we make um, bone broth, it's the part we use. And in the red part is where red blood cells are produced. Between bones, we have the joints. And in the joints is also the point where muscles will fix. Okay, so the joints are really interesting as well. And even if you didn't think about this before, there are different types of joints. Let's see them. We have three types, which are the fixed, the semi-mobile and mobile. And they are all joined by ligaments, okay? Uh, the fixed 
uh, joints are those that don't move. Uh, it's maybe it could be weird, but they are useful if you need something to grow when you grow up, like your head. Okay, so there we have some uh, joints in our head. You actually you can feel it if you touch them, like here in the lateral of our head. Um, you can feel like a scar. This is the joint. So when we are children, the cranium is smaller, but our brain should grow. So the, these joints will help the growing of the brain, okay, allowing to have more space inside for your brain. Um, they will almost disappear and uh, when, when we are older, okay, but they exist. Then we have semi-mobile uh, joints, like the ones between our vertebra, okay, so we can uh, curve them a little bit laterally or frontally but they don't have a really big uh, range of movement right so those are the semi-mobile and then we have the mobile which are the typical we think of when we think of a joint and we have also different degrees of freedom in our mobile uh, sometimes they just they can just perform one movement like this or others can be more um, uh, free, like this. It depends, okay? And I said muscles are fixed in joints. So let's talk a little bit about muscles. Specifically, we are going to talk in this unit about the striated skeletal muscle tissue. Because if you remember, we have three types of tissues. Striated skeletal, striated cardiac, and smooth. Cardiac and smooth, we are not interested in this in this unit because we are going to talk about those muscles that join the, the bones to move the body, okay? And which are the functions of the uh, muscular system specifically. Of course, movement, also maintaining the position, okay? The uh, being able to maintain our head, uh, to stand up, is also everything thanks to the muscular system or the skeletal system alone can do that and uh, a really interesting function of our muscles is to produce heat to regulate temperature it helps a lot and the way muscles fixed to bones are with tendons usually it's not only a muscle fiber which is joined to a tendon Usually uh, we have a lot of um, packages of muscle uh, fibers one next to the other in a long structure called fascicle. And not only a muscle is made of one fascicle, usually they are, there are a lot of them together. So a lot of muscle fibers uh, in lots of muscle fascicle is what we call a muscle. And in the tip in the edge of its, its muscle, this uh, set of fascicles, we have a structure made, of, made usually of cartilaginous tissue, which is the tendon. Okay, and it's also so it's connective tissue, connective tissue, and uh, usually they have a elongated shape called fusiform shape. Okay, like the form of, of a fuse. And there are some other um, possible shapes, we could be flat or circle, depending on the shape of the, the bone and the specific function. But normally they, our, all our muscles are elongated, so they have this fusiform um, shape. To perform the movement, the muscle fibers contract, so they... they um, go in between each other during this contraction function and the contraction uh, instruction comes from a motor neuron if you remember from the previous video i leave it in here it's the uh, nervous system the one that will transmit the electric impulse to say the instruction to the muscle the instruction of course is to contract to move so there will be a connection between a neuron and the muscle it's an electrical connection okay and when the this depolarization of the membrane of the neuron reaches 
the muscle. The, the muscle will also perceive this depolarization and they will start contracting. In this case, apart from the sodium potassium from the neuron, calcium has a really important role. So there will be calcium ions moving in and out the muscle cell membranes to perform these uh, contractions. And some proteins around the, mem the, the muscles will also be activated in this process of contraction, okay? And just to finish, usually in our locomotory system, we have an antagonic system. What I mean is that usually there are two muscles, one that will contract our body and then one that will release that position, like the biceps and the triceps, right? So usually we work in our system with antagonist, uh, antagonist muscles. One that will move from one side, for one side, one will move to the other side. And just to finish something about the health. So how, uh, which type of illnesses can we suffer in the locomotory system? One that affects it, um, mainly women but also men in the elderly years is osteoporosis, is when we lose density in our bones, so they are more fragile and they can break um, more easily. Arthritis is when we have a degeneration in our joints so they don't work properly and they can be inflamed and they hurt a lot. Fractures, we can all suffer this at any age when we break our bones. These locations when they uh, are not in the right position, very typical the one in the shoulder or sometimes instead of breaking the bone we can break the cartilag. And this is a cartilag tear or tearing, and it, it's really, um, uh, really painful, painful also, very typical in football players, right? This is for the bones, for the muscles we can have contractures, when uh, our muscles are for a long time contracted because we are doing a physical activity or because we are stressed, um, typically we will suffer some pain, even we can find like a, a really hard um, structure in the muscle, these are the contractors. Sprains, typically sprained ankle when we move in a wrong position the, the joint, right? Tendinitis, when we have an inflammation in the tendons that join the muscle to the, to the bone. Um, and also we can have fibrillar raptors or it's when some muscle fibers break and um, they could be smaller and regenerate in 24-48 uh, hours and it's okay but sometimes they are really strong they are gonna be really painful and you can spend maybe one month recovering from this typically also from soccer players and finally how to maintain healthy habits for our locomotory system of course, eating properly, as always, sleeping is really important when you are children for growing. We grow when we sleep, so it's really uh, necessary. Sleep, 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 sleep. Resting to avoid muscular fatigue. Um, we can't do hard intensity level exercises every day because we will fatigue our muscles and we will have some um, issues later. Also it's important to have a correct posture but the correct posture doesn't assist. The important thing is to change your posture every 30 to 1 hour. So being in your desk standing without moving for 2 hours is not healthy for your locomotory system. It's important to do some breaks and to do some stretching and changing the position, making your muscles work is a really good way to prevent, for instance, contractions and future problems. And of course, physical exercise. If you don't use your muscles, you lose muscle tissue, it becomes fat tissue and we don't want this, so it's really important. And up to here today's video, 
If you have any doubt, please leave it in the comments. And of course, see you soon.